Paul McCartney's original 1961 bass, stolen in 1972, was finally found, and it was returned to him in September of 2023. The story of Paul McCartney's stolen Hofner bass has been surrounded by various theories and speculations regarding the time and circumstances of its disappearance. Here is the true story of one of the biggest mysteries in the music world. Paul McCartney bought his first Hofner violin bass in Hamburg, Germany, during one of the Beatles' early stints in the city. Hamburg was a crucial proving ground for the band, where they honed their skills performing long sets in the city's clubs. Strangely, where Paul McCartney acquired the bass in 1961 is a matter of dispute. In one interview, he recalled that he got it at the Steinway shop in the town center. However, it's also been said that he got it from a shop called Musikhaus Steinecke, where he paid the equivalent of $37, which is about $350 as of the time of this recording. It's also been said that the bass was customized for Paul so that he could have a left-handed model, and he had to wait for it to be made. But you know, when it comes to the Beatles... There are so many times where we simply do not know the truth. The purchase was partly motivated by its symmetrical shape, which suited Paul, who was left-handed. He found it comfortable to play because flipping it over to play it left-handed did not alter its body shape, making it comfortable for the left-handed musician to play. Additionally, the Hofner was considered lighter than other basses and more affordable, which was important to Paul at the time. This Hofner violin bass quickly became Paul's primary instrument and an iconic part of the Beatles' image during the early 1960s. Its distinctive sound played a significant role in many of the Beatles' recordings throughout their career. The Hofner bass features a distinct a violin-shaped body, earning its nickname Violin Bass. This design was not only visually unique, but also contributed to its lightweight and comfortable playing experience. The body is typically made from spruce for the top and flame maple for the sides and back, with a rosewood fingerboard. The bass is renowned for its warm woody tone, which comes from its hollow body design and set of Hofner's staple nickel pickups. In 1972, Paul McCartney was touring with Wings and recording their second album, Red Rose Speedway. His team had rented a van to move the gear like his guitars and amplifiers, to various recording studios and rehearsal spaces across London. On October 10, 1972, sound engineers Trevor Jones and Ian Horn parked the van in London's Notting Hill area, not too far from where Trevor lived at the time. During the night, a thief broke the padlock on it and took out the bass guitar. And then either he or another thief or thieves took another guitar and a couple of amps. In the morning, Trevor Jones and Ian Horn went to the van and saw that the heavy padlock had been cut and was on the ground. The doors of the van were open. Trevor and Ian looked inside and saw that the bass, along with one other guitar and two Vox AC30 amps, were gone. They reported the theft to the police and went door to door asking if anyone had seen anything, as they suspected that somebody who lived nearby was responsible, since many neighbors knew that they worked for Paul McCartney and probably knew what was in the van. With absolutely no luck at all, and in fear of losing their jobs, they went to Paul's townhouse and delivered the bad news. Paul was clearly upset, but he told them not to worry about it, and he didn't fire them. At some point, the thief sold the base to a gentleman named Ronald Guest, who was the landlord of the Admiral Blake Pub. It's been said that he sold it for a little bit of money and a few pints of beer. He supposedly did not know that the bass guitar was stolen, or that it belonged to Paul McCartney. What do you think? Is there any chance that Ronald knew... Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Either way, Ronald Guest brought the bass home, and it was played for years by members of the family. And at some point, it was restrung for right-handed playing. When Ronald died, the bass was passed on to his oldest son. And when the oldest son died, it was passed on to his younger brother. And when he died, the bass was passed on to his son. And when it was not played by any members of the family, the bass was kept in its original case. And for many years, it was stored in the family's attic. Over the course of time, Paul McCartney would tell people about the stolen bass and how he wished he could get it back. In fact, years ago, he mentioned it to Nick Wass, who was a bass expert and Hofner executive. Paul asked Nick if he had any ideas to help find it. And so Hofner Guitars, with its established presence in the music industry, began to bring attention to the mystery of the lost bass. And as you can imagine, Beatles fans all around the world joined in, sharing their thoughts and ideas and looking for clues. Many daydreamed about being the one to find the guitar and perhaps even be the one to hand it to Paul McCartney and maybe even get some kind of reward. In May of 2023, a couple of journalists got involved to help gather leads in hopes of finding information on the whereabouts of the missing bass. The Lost Bass Project, also referred to as Trace the Bass, received hundreds of leads and suggestions regarding the whereabouts of the bass. And as with any other investigation, most of the leads were likely from weirdos with all sorts of bizarre theories that went nowhere. Now listen, I'm not looking to diminish the hard work of anyone 
who try to help solve the mystery. But it seems obvious that in the end, not a single person who put any effort into finding the missing base actually found it. Yeah, sure, there were some things written in October and November of 2023 saying that the search was being narrowed and they knew who stole it and who had it. But that's because they knew something that the public did not know. And that is that the base had already been found. Word has it that in late September of 2023, East Sussex resident Kathy Guest, who's had some financial struggles as a single mother with two children, learned that Paul McCartney's bass guitar was missing. And she wondered if maybe she had it in her attic. And so nobody was knocking on her door. Nobody was tracking her down. She wasn't feeling the heat. It was she who contacted Paul McCartney's staff. And she told them that she thought that she might have his missing base. And she asked them for further information. And that's how the return of the base really got started. They sent her pictures of the instrument that they were looking for. And she sent back pictures of the base that she had. And they confirmed that it was the actual base that they were looking for. And after that, they sent somebody around to pick it up. And so, yeah, it seems that it was Kathy Guest who was the one who found Paul McCartney's base. No one else. And if that's the case, then she is a hero and deserves a heck of a lot of credit and a heck of a lot of respect. Mr. Wass then drove from Germany to England to help authenticate that it was, in fact, Paul McCartney's missing Hofner. And he was delighted to see that it was. He noted that the base was in need of repair, including fixing a crack in the neck, replacing the damaged bridge, and repairing non-functional pickups. The base was then cleaned up and returned to Paul McCartney. The news that it was found was leaked by the family's 21-year-old son, whose name nobody in the world could possibly be able to pronounce, posted a picture of himself holding the base on social media. I read that he is a film student, and if so, he must be interested in the technical aspects of it and not the storytelling. And he should have produced a series of videos that he could have easily put on YouTube or somewhere else to share with the world. He could have contacted a production company and had this made into a documentary, but none of that was done. Instead, his mom just called up Paul McCartney's office and says, hey, I think I got your guitar, and they gave it back to him. I mean, and this is the story of a lifetime. How in the world do you let this go? He also would have made a lot of money doing it and would have been a hero to Beatles fans around the world who would have loved to have learned the real story. Supposedly, Paul McCartney's team had promised a reward for the instrument's safe return. As of the date of this recording, it is not known if or what Paul offered this lady who did such an incredibly kind deed. After all, she didn't steal it. And her husband didn't steal it. And her son didn't steal it. And because of its history, the base is supposedly worth $12.5 million as of the time of this recording. And so now we have to wonder about the status of the reward. At the very least, should Paul give the family one of his other guitars as a reward? I'm sure he has plenty. Oh, by the way, before handing over the guitar, Kathy Gass wrote a handwritten note to Paul McCartney, mentioning her financial situation and that she is the mother of two children in school. Let me ask you this. What if she decided to keep the base? It's been over half a century. How much recourse would Paul McCartney have really had to get it back from her if she decided to put it up for sale or decided to keep it? I have no idea. If you happen to know or have any thoughts about this, kindly let me know in the comments below. And so whether or not Paul ever saw her note or cared about its contents is presently unknown. So what do you think Paul McCartney should offer her as a reward? As of the date of this recording, it is unknown if Paul ever gave a reward to Miss Guest. And if a bunch of time goes by without that happening, perhaps somebody needs to start a campaign to reward her for what she did. Because if Paul won't do it, perhaps Beatle fans will. Let me know your thoughts about all of this in the comments below. By the way, I do not know who took some of the images that I've shown in the show. So if you do, please let me know so I can respectfully give them the credit that they deserve. Kindly remember to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell, because there will be more shows like this one, and I hope you check those out too. Please check out the links below to learn how to support my research and productions. Kindly be kind to all non-human animals, and please don't eat them. They don't like that. Remember, for the benefit of compassion for all living things and their own health, brilliant people throughout history, including the Beatles, chose a plant-based diet. And please do yourself a favor and go to a local shelter and adopt a cat or a dog, or both. You and they will be very glad that you did. Until next time, I wish you safe travels on all your journeys.